Time to go home. What the hell? You again? What are you, let me guess, you're watching Rambo? No, what are you watching? Sure. How'd you even get in here? I, I came alone. We're supposed to be home till after sundown. Okay. I want my key back. Whatever. Hello, this is Terry with Vanning in Plain Sight. I'm in our latest stealth van build. Come sneak back with me, let's have a look. This is Tony and I'll be taking over from here as you can see, this side of the van is one of my favorites because this is where I get to chill, relax, watch Rambo as I please. And we designed it in this way for a specific reason to give you more open space so you don't have counter on both sides pinning you in. So on the driver's side of the van, you have the whole build out, shower, kitchen, the countertop. And then on this side, it's open. So you feel freer in this confined space as far as the tv that's very important to most of us we got a 40 inch which is the biggest we could possibly put and um to use very easy unlock right here pull out on an angle swivel and boom get to enjoy your tv from right here from the from the bench, from the bed, and if you're outside, turn it this way. So under the TV, we added a cabinet, um, matching uh, countertops, and two drawers, and uh, storage space on the bottom underneath. So, um, and everything flows real nicely. The shower is also a first for us. Usually we go, we go with the Nautilus retractable shower door, which works, we were happy with it. It's a little flimsy. We decided to try out a full glass shower door this time, just like you'd see at home. Had it made for this van and it has elevated it tremendously. Big heavy door, really beautiful. Um, in addition to a little glass window we put here, that way in this 24 by 32 shower pan, you also, again, don't feel so closed in. You can see out and you don't get so claustrophobic. In here, we always like to double up our showers as closet space. Um, a lot of people on the road obviously shower at gyms. They don't use it every day, but they want it as an option. So when you're not showering every day, this can be used as a closet. So we have these PVC boards that set here, waterproof. You can put your bags here. And then we have a removable pole up here that you can hang your clothes. We like to use the Moen Smart Shower System for all of our showers. It's just this screen here where you can set your temperature, hit start pause on your shower, and it allows us to remove the normal shower valves and handle set from inside the shower wall. That way we can have a thin wall, and instead of having all the fittings here, we only have one fitting, which as I said earlier, is accessible from behind this drawer. And the screen only has one wire that routes to the electric shower valve that's underneath your sink. We also love to use the High Sierra shower heads. They are high pressure, low flow. We've enjoyed them more than anything else we've used. So we put those in every van. Yeah, you scared me. Which wouldn't happen because you can see everyone who's coming when you're doing your business. So there's just enough room in here for a comfortable poo. And it's especially comfortable because I can see who's coming. Or if I open the door, I can poop with a view. For our kitchen, we use this solid surface laminate from Wilson Art. This stuff's tough. We love it. We've used it before. 
Um, we have a very large sink with pull down faucet and then of course uh, filtered water so you don't need to bring water bottles with you and then we like to do our spice rack all along so another thing with living full time in a van or long term is we like to add as much dimension and spatial fun that we can um, so that includes things like this we got three tiers from your upper cabinets first spice rack second spice rack kind of goes into the contours of the van and then we like to do a little step up here in the kitchen those small little details trick the eye so that it's not one straight line and it makes things feel a bit bigger a bit more open for cooking we like to do the camp chef two burner stove and oven we don't tend to do induction it's nice but it is very power hungry so we like to be as off-grid as possible we do have a 600 amp hour battery bank, 350 watts of solar, plus you do charge from driving. Um, however, when you're out there full time and you're cooking two to three meals a day, it still can eat up your battery bank. So we like to take the stress off of that, especially if you want to run the AC or something else, you want to leave the power for that. So we take the stress off the battery bank by sticking to a propane burner, plus you get an oven, which is a nice feature, but we also don't like large propane tanks. So what we do, is this kind of free sits in here and we have only the coleman little one pound propane tanks this regulator is the only fitting it's the factory from the stove and this pins into the back bar here so this is the only propane fitting in the van so you don't really have to worry about lines getting punctured bad fittings and if you're ever leaving the van worried about it you just take that little one pound pro uh, coleman tank out and it's you're good to go. You're safe. Um, another added feature, you get to take this thing outside. So that's fun. Um, underneath, we do have some storage, pots and pans. Under the sink, this is where we have most of our plumbing. So we have a four gallon electric Bosch water heater. Um, water filter, of course. And then we have our, our electric um, shower valve for the shower. So it is a four season van. We want it to be used in the winter. That means all of the plumbing being exposed where you can see it and get to it if you ever get ice buildup. We have a lot of storage over here. The drawers get progressively bigger. And then this little cabinet we call the toiletry cabinet. Just a bit extra storage. And then up top, of course, this is all just pantry. This switch here is for the water heater. And then we give you another 110 here for the kitchen. The bench is also your dining table. Underneath the bed, we have our pull-out table. And this is the same um, solid surface laminate from Wilson Art, but we went with a uh, white marble look. This table is on 500 pound slides, so it can support you. Um, big enough to dine for two very comfortably. I'm a third person if you had to squeeze them in. This magnetically locks to the back. So it won't come out when you drive. And of course we have the isotherm drawer refrigerator underneath, the small freezer. And then in the bench below beside me here is where we have our Webasto heater outlet that ties into your fuel tank. And then we have another 12 and 110 outlet. Beside your main dining table here, we also added another table, a little shorter one, also on 500 pound slides, matching this countertop. It's just kind of an extension of countertop. So more prep space, doesn't take up any space in the aisle, good place to fold clothes, whatever. Nice to have. Below it, we have some fuses and some electrical. So all your electrical is in the garage underneath the bed behind the fridge, but we like to put the fuses, the breakers, and some master cutoff switches here so that you can get to it without having to go outside. So all of your 12 volt fuses, 110 breakers, your solar cutoff, your main system cutoff, and then we have a, a um, SIM card router here as well. And then hidden under this cushion and the end, we also have a safe just big enough to store some money, passports, things like that. And then the rest of the bench is just all open storage. Room for more clothes, whatever you have.
Again, everything is on soft clothes. We're able to fit a full-size mattress in here going side to side in the van instead of lengthwise. It saves us a lot of space. We also were able to use just a standard size full mattress. So nothing RV specific. So this can be swapped out for anything. I'm 6'1 and I fit pretty comfortably. And it's not just good enough for one. If you're in love, plenty of space for another. Above the foot of the bed, we've built what we call the armoire. And it's kind of meant for your clothing storage. So in the center, we've got a big space with a divider to kind of separate your shirts and pants. And then we've got it separated by four smaller units. So you can organize your socks, underwear, whatever else. Here we have kind of our cubby nightstand. We put a 12 volt outlet, outlet in it to charge some phones. And then at the very back of the van, we have our bookshelf wall unit. Uh, this is mainly to act as a buffer between your bed where you're sleeping and the back doors. You can catch some cold in these back door gaskets. The doors curve out a bit. So I'm sure people know you drop your phone there when you're sleeping. That's never fun. Opening up the back doors and your pillows falling out. That always sucks. So this prevents all that. Also provides a bit more storage. And then we also put 110, 12 volt outlet in it for, for charging. And then we have another light zone back here for the bookshelf and then with LEDs running along the sides. At the center of the bookshelf, we did want to leave a window just in case you're somewhere where you want to open up, let some fresh light and fresh air in. So we did that and we put a little retractable screen so that you have some bug protection. At the back of the van, we have our garage area. We have it lit up and this is where we put as much storage as we can for any kind of long-term toys and stuff you want to bring. At the driver's side, we leave it completely open. We line everything with a very tough lawn seal. Um, so this is good storage for bikes, Oru kayaks, electric scooters, whatever you might want to bring with you, golf clubs. We put a 110 volt outlet right here for anything you might want to charge. Um, and in the center, we have our electrical system. So it's a 600 amp hour battery bank, three 200 amp hours from um, SOK, lithium batteries. And then we have a Victron system with a 3000 watt inverter charger, um, MPPT charge controller, DC to DC charger. Under here is also the um, Victron Lynx distribution, Servo GX, all that. We put a shelf here so you can have some storage up top. This easily comes off. And on the passenger side, we have our plumbing. So it's a 42 gallon fresh water tank. Um, to fill, you'd open up the back door. We don't like to have an external fill because it's kind of RV looking. So we want to keep it as discreet as possible. Um, and we have our water pump here. So everything is very, all the plumbing is very accessible, including electrical, all very accessible, easy to get to, work on, which is nice for winter for the plumbing especially. Um, above here, this is the back of our bookshelf. We cover everything, make it look nice. This is the window we have with the pull down screen. So if you are somewhere where you want to open up the back and let some light in, you have the option. We also put a 12 volt outlet back here and a little bit of storage. checking out our latest stealth van build. We truly believe that stealth vanning is the ultimate form of van life. We believe it really does provide the freest and most uninhibited form of travel possible. You know, RVs are fantastic. They're great for family road trips. They're great for getting out there on the open road and seeing nature and the beauty that this country and that the continent has to offer. Vans are a bit better in maneuverability, uh, being able to, to park more places, easier to drive, 
but it's only in a stealth van or a stealth box truck, something stealthy where you can really get out there and just travel at ease. Go where you want without any kind of planning. You don't have to have some detailed itinerary booked for your entire trip. Know what campground you're going to, make sure a spot's reserved, and make sure you get there in time before it gets dark so that you can set up. In a stealth van, you can just go wherever you want, whenever you want, at your own time. So you don't just have to go see, you don't have to stop at campgrounds, you don't, you don't, you're not limited to only national parks and national forests and the beauty of nature. You can also see all the towns, all the cities, you can go to any museums, theme parks, whatever you're into. You can freely do it without having to retreat to a campground before, before sunset. You know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to go into a new city, check out all the city has to offer, head back to your van and just go park at street parking for the night without anyone knowing the difference. That's the kind of freedom that a stealth van will give you. I myself lived in a stealth van for two years. When I built my van, I knew I was going to need to be stealthy because I wasn't planning on staying at any campgrounds. So I worked seasonally and uh, I spent summers in the Hamptons and um, winters in Miami Beach and Aspen. And I knew I was going to have to stay in town for three, four months at a time without relying on campgrounds. And so I was able to do that without ever having any issues or getting the dreaded knock, getting told to move on. And that was only because A, I had a stealthy van and B, I had very stealthy habits. So it's not enough just to have a very stealthy shell of a van. It's also, you need to have the right behaviors so that at night before you go to bed, you don't open up your sliding door and flash your living area to the whole world. You know, that's why we put in a pocket door so that you can just pull up where you want to sleep at night check around, come to the pocket door, close up, brush your teeth, cook some dinner, watch a movie, go to sleep. No one knows what's going on inside. It's a beautiful thing. I love that life more than any other time in my life. And that's why we build these so that we can share that and provide the opportunity for anyone out there who's interested. Let's see what he was really watching. I have a feeling. Yep, I knew it. Media, you can be he loves anyone. the circle. The games begin.